It's a little closer over on this edge. Let's tap it. This is Dave on the Crafting Channel. Look at this ugly drill press. I'm restoring one just like it. I'm actually using this old thing before I restore it. Here's the one I'm restoring. And we can see the motor parts down there. They're all painted. I'm waiting on some ball bearings to come in before I can finish the uh, head assembly. One of the issues, a very interesting repair, the wheel crank. How this drill press came to me was with this piece of all thread, which I think is some English thread, SAE thread, was kind of threaded into here, into this wobbly thread hole, and that's what they had for a handle crank on it. And these things come loose very easily, uh, you know, the, the handles that they come with. And people don't tighten them, and they use them, and over the years they wobble, 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 and wobble the threads out. And that's what's happened to this part, and all three of these holes are ruined. I've got two similar drill presses, and they have um, <clears throat> 7 16 shafts running out to the ball. I ordered a piece of half inch stock and what I plan to do is to tap this to 11 millimeter, 11, uh, 11 by 1.5 millimeter thread and I'm going to do this on the lathe uh, so that I can get the right angle here and also I can use the, uh, uh, the holes in my bull gear to index this so that I get the uh, um, everything positioned just right. I don't want to end up, if I, I were to try to do this by hand, I'd end up with the handles not square to this surface. Um, it would just look very poor. And I'm going to get you up real close here so you can you can see the condition of these holes. I don't know if that shows, but boy these are just terrible. You can even see they're ovals. Well, in measuring them, I figured out that the minimum that I need to take them out is 11 millimeters. Now, an 11 millimeter, the nearest English bit for a 75% thread, because this is a cast aluminum or cast the Mac, is 3 eighths of an inch. <clears throat> and that's not going to take very much of a cut out of there, but it's going to make the hole round, and it's going to let me use this Irwin... 11 by 1.5 tap to tap it. But the problem is how do I jig this so that I get all three of these holes even or if I have a slight angle error it's the same on all three holes so that it's all symmetric in appearance. Uh, so that's really the trick here. And I figured out a way to do that with my lathe and my tool post by making some drill bushings and I'm getting ready to machine those now. Now one of my other problems is my lathe only has a 7 8 hole in the spindle which means this will fit in the spindle and my jaws will reach up into here somewhere where we still have uh, splines that's full of hard packed grease. I'm concerned about how I'm going to hold this um, you know, I suppose I could count these splines and see if it's divisible by three. Then I can put a jaw right on top of each spline. So let's, let's count them. Start with this one. That's got a little round spot of grease there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So there's thirteen splines. I'm going to count one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13 splines. So 13 is not divisible by 3, so I won't end up with a jaw on uh, one of those. So I've got a work holding problem here. This piece and this piece are separate. This is steel. This is Zamac or cast aluminum. We have a pin driven in here. And it'd be nice just to go on the other side and drive it out, but guess what? It's a blind pin. So I have to get that pin out of there if I want to just chuck this part up 
here in my three jaw chuck. So I've really yet to make the decision about if or how I'm going to do that. I really need to uh, go ahead and try to get that pen out of there. <sighs> so this project might start there. If I do that, I think I'm going to drill this and tap it for 440. Try to pull it out that way. And I can slightly move this part inside of here so it's not pressed in there tightly. But we don't know how tight that pin is in there. A couple problems. Interesting problem to solve in my drill press restoration. So let's see if we can work it out. So I made a really gentle center punch mark to see if I could hit the middle of that. I think I'm pretty close. Maybe I can strike it a little harder. This is my John Fisher. February 22nd of 1969, ball peen hammer. There we go. Found that center punch mark I'm in. You see that drove that in further. It's tempting to drive it all the way in. But then it might get a lot harder to get out. So now I'm going to drill it. Here's my part in a V-block. It's going to go 632. 632 tap and a little teeny tap wrench and a number 32 drill bit. And I've got a little tiny center drill here, 3 sixteenths. Let's see if we can spot this in. It's moving off center. Trying to slide it over. Okay, I got a good center going now. Looks pretty on center. I don't know why that wanted to walk on me. All right, let's see if we can knock this out. Increase the speed. I'm drilling much too slowly for such a small drill bit. Well, that's much better.
We've got an adequately deep hole there. Get rid of the swarf. Now we can look and judge how close I got to the center of that part. Not bad. It's a little closer over on this edge. Let's tap it. So I'm using one of my number uh, 632 taps out of the Ace Hansen 614 tap and die set. I release the return spring on the drill press. Put some more lube on that. Feels like it's cutting okay. There we go. I'm just turning the pulley at the top of the drill press. And starting to slip on the tap some. I sure don't want to break that, so I'm not even doing a whole turn. See if I can get the jaws further down on it. Boy. Just in case, I'm going to get another 632 tap that may be sharper. Might be the hardness of the material. I don't know. I don't want to take a chance. Here we have a new 632 Ace Hansen or Hansen Irwin. It's all the same family, folks. I think it cuts a little easier. Pretty close to the same. Yeah, it's cutting better. Let's go over to the bench and finish this with a wrench. Feels so much better with the wrench instead of turning the pulley on the top of the drill press. But by using that drill press method to get it started, I know I get it started right down the same path that the drill bit cut. <clears throat> Hopefully that's threaded deep enough. Now I hope I didn't make the mistake of making this so big that when I pull on the pin it breaks. My camera keeps shutting off, I don't know why. But we can see our pin is up about a hundred thousandths. I'm pulling it up through the hollow tube effect of the two large nuts. And I think it has begun to turn, because I turned this quite a bit and it didn't rise anymore. So what I'm going to do now is hold the Allen and run the nut down on the Allen. Which should... Which will pull the fastener, 632 fastener higher, and retract the pin further.
So you can think your way through a problem here. Even a pin in a blind hole can be removed if it can be drilled and threaded. I was originally going to do this with 440. I did it with 632 because it looked like there was enough material here and I was successful. Your limiting factor is if you get the wall of the pin too thin it could crack and break. And of course the smaller the fastener the more you can be off center with your drilled hole and not have your, uh, when you run the tap down in there, not have it break the surface of the of the pin. So do we have it out of there? I think we got it. There it is. Let's get it off of there. Just a straight dowel pin, no taper, and I didn't drill it all the way through, as it turns out. Got it awful deep, just not all the way through. So this should come off now. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's not loose. Well, let's see. We can still figure out how to get it off. <laughs> 